Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester two, routing and switching essentials. This is chapter seven, routing dynamically, and section 7.4, link state dynamic routing. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain the process by which link state routing protocols learn about other networks, describe the information sent in a link state update, describe advantages and disadvantages of using link state routing protocols and identify protocols that use the link state routing process like OSPF and ISIS. This is going to be a short lesson as uh, we're going to talk a lot more about link state routing protocol in chapter 8 which is OSPF is dedicated to link state routing protocol and you're going to learn a lot more in CCNA 3 which two chapters are dedicated to link state routing protocol. Link state routing protocols, they do work on the shortest path first. So they look at the bandwidth, well, they add the bandwidth from the source to the destination. And then they can, they, the, after they run the calculation or algorithm, they will find out the best path to the destination and they will add up that on the routing table. There's two routing protocols in the link, link state routing protocol, which is OSPF and ISIS. Now, if you remember the difference between li link state routing protocols and distance vector, now distance vectors, they kind of like a route by a rumor, whatever the neighbor is telling them. Say, okay, well, uh, to the destination, for example, ABC, there's five hops away that way. So direction, which is, for example, towards the FA00, and how many, uh, how far is the, for example, five hops away. Now with distance vector protocols, you run in risk of running, uh, getting a routing loop as the routers they don't really see the whole topology they don't really know uh, is it true what the neighbor is telling them maybe the neighbor is uh, there's a problem with that or has got misinformed or anything link state routing protocols is a bit different to that because these protocols they learn the whole topology and they keep the topology in the in the memory so they maintain that topology for this reason link state routing protocols they require a lot more resources than dis distance vector routing protocols but there's no routing loop on link state protocol so the first step in this link state routing process is that each router will learn about its own links and its own directly connected networks so for example even if you advertise a network say that it's not directly connected to to the router so say that you, you're trying to advertise network i don't know 10 1, 1, 0, but that network is not directly connected the router is not going to advertise that network just because you typed it is not is not going to advertise so you will advertise or you will share information only a valid information so by default they're going to start learning about who what is directly connected to me the second step in the link state routing process is that each router is responsible for meeting its neighbors on directly connected networks so the routers they will start exchanging the hello messages they start meeting the neighbors they're going to go through the process trying to for example if if they can be the the neighbors so they they'll try and read the attributes for example if we are in same area and so on which you're going to learn in next chapter but they they have to meet the neighbors using the hello and they have to maintain the neighbors are still there the third step in the link state routing process is that each router builds a link state packet lsps containing the state of each directly connected link so for example the each router will build his own lsps saying okay well i got connect i got directly connected network past ethernet 00 in that it will explain for example it will build like an update for the neighbor so lsps so it will explain what type of network is it how many neighbors do they have on that link what's the cost of that link and obviously the ip address and that network and the subnet mask so it will give all this information to the neighbor. The fourth step in the link state routing process is that each router floods LS LSPs to all neighbors who then store these LSPs received in a database. So for example, if router A has got a new network, fast Ethernet 00 and, uh, and directly connected, then the, the router one, for example, will build an LSP explaining everything there is about that network, like type and cost and so on. Now he's gonna send it to the neighbors. Say he send it to router two. And then router two, before he does anything, any calculation, any algorithm, he will start sending it to his neighbors. So uh, OSPF has got disadvantage over other protocols 
they exchange these LSPs as quickly as possible. As for, as soon as they get them, they full flood them to all all other neighbors. So if, as soon as you hear information, new information, first thing, tell my neighbors, flood to my neighbors. The final step in the link state routing process is that each router uses the database to construct a complete map of topology table, topology and computes the best path to each destination network. Now, say, say you're receiving lots of LSPs from the neighbor, I don't know, five neighbors, for example, yeah? As you're receiving these LSPs, you put them on the, on the de, uh, topology table, or it's called database table on OSPF. And then you're gonna run the algorithm, find out, okay, from me to the destination, what is the best path? Should I go through neighbor one, two, or three? And the best path that you've chosen, you've gone through the algorithm, then you will add that on the routing table, or will you offer it to the routing table? So for example, adding OSPF routes to the routing table. So if, as you build this database, you will pick the best path and you will put it on the routing table. Here are some advantages and disadvantages of link state routing protocols. The advantages are, for example, each router will build its own topological map of the network to determine the shortest path. So it will build uh, this topology saying, okay, well, it's like A to Z, yeah? It's like a, uh, the whole destination, the whole network sees the whole picture and it will put itself in the, the center point and then you will find the best path to get to the destination. I said to you, another advantage will be the immediate flooding of LSPs achieves a faster convergence, right? As soon as you get new LSPs, you send it to your neighbors. Before you even doing anything, you're, you take it and you flood it to your neighbors. LSPs are sent only when there's a change in the topology and contain only the information recording that change, which is a good thing because it's not like a, a riff where it sends updates every 30 seconds. OSPF sends an LSPs only when there's something has changed. In the beginning, yeah, they do exchange all that, but then they just be quiet until there's something has changed. And then they will send the change and what has changed. Hierarchical design used when implementing multiple areas. Some disadvantages of link state routing protocols. That topology table right, that we have to keep and we have to maintain it. It does require additional memory. So for example, you keep in that like a, a to Z map of the whole network or every network on your, to, on your area, that's gonna require additional memory. The calculation of sh shortest path first algorithm also requires additional CPU processing because as you're going through the algorithm to try and find out which is the best way, you're gonna be need more processing power. Bandwidth can be adversely affected by the link state packet loading. So like we said, as soon as new link comes, just gonna flood it to all the neighbors and the neighbors will flood it to their neighbors, which you can affect the bandwidth with that. Thank you for watching this section, 7.4, Link State Dynamic Routing. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici and next video, we're gonna talk about 7.5, the routing table. Bye-bye.